python raw python basics uh, screen of mine can anyone confirm in the chat uh, yes I'll, we can we can see your screen okay perfect perfect all right so yeah so like you can see we are going to start with raw python basics absolutely zero level stuff absolutely from scratch uh, and uh, then we will slowly uh, get our hands on with better and better tools as we go on so let's start the game then okay so why are we learning python basically is because our aim end goal is to you know uh, develop some understanding of a tool which can help us not in just one particular domain but almost all the things if you want to do uh, machine learning python is there if you want to do deep learning python is there if you want to just simply automate stuff python is there right so there is a huge plethora of possibilities that you can tackle uh, just by uh, you know learning python so i mean people also focus on learning r but python is good enough in that sense and that is a never ending battle but i would encourage every one of us because we are non programmers we we would want to learn a programming language that helps solve the purpose and uh, helps uh, us get better at at a tool which can solve absolutely anything right so let's start by you know uh, tackling uh, various things uh, in python that we can do okay so let me provide the heading and i hope everyone's following this hands on uh, as much as they can uh, so let's call this a python crash course in this we will not import any libraries or nothing it will just be uh, you know uh, syntax kind of tutorial uh, how to do various things in python so let's first look at how to print something in python okay printing something basically uh, when you are using a jupyter notebook this is called a jupyter notebook environment if you are using a google collab notebook they both look very similar to each other you know uh, the the similarity lies in the fact that they have this code cell where you can code you know where this cursor is popping up that input come input in means an input cell and you can whenever you are done typing some command you can just do shift plus uh, enter to run it okay in other kind of interpreters where we where we for example if you are writing a python script that is a different kind of thing we are not going to dive into that but today we are looking at a jupyter notebook which is going to be our uh, go to place for uh, for the initial few months of our data science journey right so to print something in python as you might have guessed the simple command is print and in the parenthesis you just have to type whatever so i can type hey itb right so this is the print statement and right if, as a type shift plus enter shift and enter together you can see the output is displayed in this okay the output is displayed in here right all right so this is uh, the simple way to print it now anything that you print is uh, is to be enclosed within uh, quotation marks it can be single quotation or double quotation marks right so you can see i can replace this with double quotation marks as well and that's allowed in python as well okay and someone would ask me why do we have an allowance for both kind of quotation marks why cannot why does python allow it python allows it for a particular reason for example what if we had an apostrophe apostrophe for example i want to print this statement uh hey today is weather is good now you see an, a clear problem with this one python has no way to understand where this particular statement is starting and where it is ending you can see it is understanding so whatever is in the red color that is the python's interpretation of what is to be printed you can see it's starting here but apostrophe is is nothing in terms of in in python's brain you have to tell python that this is a part of my statement and it is at this point that we would rather enclose it within double quotation marks rather than single quotation marks so what's happening if we want to use uh, a single quotation mark as a part of our statement we would want to enclose it within double quotation marks if you want to use double quotation mark as a part of your statement you would enclose the entire thing in single quotations right so that's all about print statement good enough right now 
let's do some simple computation. Okay, let's do some simple computation with Python. Just addition, subtraction stuff, all very uh, rudimentary. Uh, as we go on, this, the the level with, will keep on rising, right? So addition, simple, two plus three is five. Subtraction, five minus five is zero. Division, five by five is one. You can see uh, this is coming out to be zero, but this is coming out to be 1.0, you know. So there are two different data types. We'll just look at it in just a bit, but I want a heads up to you that this is a different data type. This is called an integer data type, and this is called a floating point data type. Anyone who's, ha who's ever had C++ lectures in their past, they must know the theory behind data types, okay? So this is any number that has decimals, any number that has decimals will have uh, uh, will, will be called a floating point data type and any number which does not have decimals is called an integer data type. OK, now how to multiply two numbers? How to uh, you know, for example, you can see now one thing that I want to point your head to is that whenever you add two numbers, the output by default is you know, if both both the numbers are integers, the output is is an integer. But no matter whether two numbers are integer or not, division always gives you a floating point number. It never gives you an integer. OK, so always remember that now multiplication is easy. What if you want to raise something to its power? Now this is important because it is not. What do you think you would think that if you want to square a number, you would do something like this because that's how we type it. That's now that's that's not what it does. Five to the power. It is an operator, bitwise operator, but we rarely use it. I don't even know what it is doing in the back end. Okay, I've never used this, but this is not how to square it. Okay, this is not not the way to square a number. Okay, but if you want to square a number, you have to use double asterisk symbol, double star marks. Okay, five to the power two. 25 to the power 0.5 that square root right so you can see uh, simple computations uh, that's that's as easy as it is what if you wanted to check the data type what if you had to check the data type for example you have this 5.0 all you have to do is use the type function EYPE type and pass on the number that you want to check the data type of. So you can see this is a float, but if you if you check the data type of just five, it is an int. OK, so you can see the first one is this one float and the second one is an int. That's all about data types, right? So we have seen powers and exponents. We have seen uh, uh, a few simple computations. Let's let's now look at how to check for remainder? OK, let me bold it up. Remainders and. Questions now I'll just tell you where where this can be useful, OK, but let, let's look at what the remainder, how to calculate the remainder of a division in in Python. So for example, if I want to divide five by two. And I want to check what is the remainder. I can use five percentage two. This is called the modulo operator, OK? Modulo. It's called the percentage symbol is called modulo in Python. So five modulo two will result in one, which is the remainder when you divide five by two. And if I use double slashes and use the same thing, it's called flow division. It gives you the quotient. So the first. This one. It gives you what it gives you the remainder. This one it gives you the quotient. Now you ask me where this thing can be useful. The remainder, uh, what if you wanted to uh, check whether a number is an odd number or an even number? In that case, you might have guessed this is a very useful thing. In a lot of, uh, you know, when, when you are trying to work for any industry or any company and you are trying to develop a software or a tool for, for a particular client or whatever solution you are developing, you might want to put there some kind of conditions, right? What if that condition somewhere it wants to check for whether if a particular output is an even number, then only I will proceed with the next part of my program. Otherwise, I will 
stop that program. In that case, the modulo can be very useful. OK, all right. So these were all about uh, simple computations in Python and printing in Python.